Welcome friends to another episode of Blossom and Bourbon. My name is Mark and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this very, very special episode. Um, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions. We're in my workroom and what makes this so special is that tonight we have a peanut gallery. <laughs> Let's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Um, Michael Cranwell, a friend, volunteered his bottle of Elmer T. Lee for tasting tonight. So we're going to be getting to that pretty quickly here as soon as we finish up with this flower thing. Um, the flower thing tonight is about how the vase determines the features of the arrangement. So you've heard me say before that I've often tell my designers, let the container speak to you. And I've also told you that sometimes the designers will put the container on the table and they'll say, I don't hear a thing. Well, you know, that may be more intuitive than anything, but there are ways that the container can kind of indicate to you what the arrangement should look like. So we're gonna put one together, um, just based on this arrangement and this container alone, and then I've got another sample that I wanna show you. Starting out with this, it's not an unusual shape container at all, frosted white, I like because you don't have to worry about stem showing. Um, I took one of the Holly Chapel pillows, and I'm only using half of it. Instead of using the whole thing, use half on top, cut the tabs off so they wouldn't get in the way. As you can see from when Jason zooms in, um, this sits right over the lip of this container, so it was really perfect for it. A little clear tape to kind of hold it in place and make sure it's nice and secure, not going anywhere, okay? All right, so we're gonna start out with some green hydrangeas that I forage from my yard. Um, all right, so what I'm doing is cutting that a little bit low. This is actually gonna be part of the mechanic. It's gonna help kind of hold other flowers in place. Um, I also want that flower to kind of cover a little bit of that mechanic down there with the, the Holly Chapel thing. So as I was trying to figure out how this container is going to speak to the arrangement, what do you think that might have been? What do you think that that could have possibly been about? Like the shape of the container kind of flares out at the top. So definitely that's what I'm gonna be looking at is kind of creating something that has a little bit more openness at the top and a little more flow. Um, you could certainly use this container for a low compact design, but I think the open airy kind of flow part of it is gonna be where we're headed. Thank you, Jason, because it looks like a bourbon glass. <laughs> that's probably why this is one of my favorite containers. All right. I am gonna keep the basic part of the flowers a little bit tight a little bit low, and then I have a plan for what's gonna create the flow up above. Let's do a little bit of this Dusty Miller. So far we've got white stock, these Playa Blanca roses in there, the limelight hydrangeas that I swiped from my yard this morning. And I'm going with a color palette that's basically white and green. And partly that is being determined by the fact that this is a white container because I want to kind of carry that through. All right, this, do you guys know what this is? Cosmos, white cosmos. It's just such a beautiful flower. It's very wispy, kind of free floating, kind of a hippie flower, right? And that is what I want to be the thing that just develops the space about the arrangement, develops the air about it, makes it feel just like it's gonna float off. That's a great question. Dean asked if there's a plan when I start the arrangement or if it develops as I go along. And sometimes both. <laughs> sometimes, especially for like a wedding or a special event, there's definitely a plan. Uh, when someone calls and orders something from the shop, that definitely is a case of where it just happens. You know, my wife likes funky flower arrangements, so make something funky with purple in it. And then we just do our thing. Yeah. Not that that means anything to anybody here, but. All right. So this really is beginning to feel like I wanted it to. It kind of, see how the vase kind of opens up and the flowers just kind of follow that shape? And that was another case of the hydrangea being the mechanic. I just put that bloom right in there, just like in the last episode. So it holds nice and in place. That would be a really fun, whimsical arrangement for your table. Let's look at one more where the container really helped determine what the arrangement looked like. And you may ask yourself how. 
But this container I love because it's so weird. And it's very angular, it's very modern, very contemporary. So I wanted the arrangement to feel that way, very angular and contemporary. So this beautiful stem of orchids, kind of a little asymmetrical and off to the side, more visual weight pulled off to this side with this leaf, but then we've got to have something that makes it physically look like it's not going to tip over. And that's what these roses are doing right here. So it actually kind of balances and creates that visual weight so that it looks sturdy, like it's secure and it's not going anywhere. Uh, but it also feels kind of funky and weird the way that the, the arrangement's styled. So this is definitely a way, this is a way, we're going to explore some other ways that containers can talk to you and that they can actually give you some hints about what the arrangement might be like. Um, an important thing in flower world is knowing the rules so that you can break the rules, right? And Anthony and I are just terrible rule breakers, aren't we, A? Eh? <laughs> All right, so that was fun with flowers. Now let's do bourbon. Um, Michael very generously offered his bottle of Elmer T. Lee single barrel sour mash. This is a very highly sought after bourbon. Um, it's not crazy expensive in terms of retail world, about 40 bucks, 38, 40 bucks. Um, but I, I don't know what's caused it to be, so maybe because it's allocated that it's so scarce. And uh, I also read the other day that now on secondary market, this bottle's bringing 10 to 12 times the retail. So thank you so much for sharing it with us tonight. <laughs> no, you can't have it back. Uh, so anyway, Elmer T. Lee was one of, I think he's been called the father of bourbon. Um, he, this product came from the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky. Um, yeah. Hey, did we try this one when we were in Kentucky? Oh. Well, that's a pity. Um, this is actually, from what I've read, developed from the Buffalo Traces. I'll pass this off so you guys can try. <laughs> the secret mash bill number two. And mash bill number two with Buffalo Trace Distillery is a high rye mash bill. So this is gonna have a little bit of the spice we would expect from uh, a high rye content. So anyway, nice color. It's got a pretty sort of amber color. One of the notes I read about this said there's a little citrus on the nose and there definitely is. Little caramel, vanilla, that seems to be pretty characteristic of, of bourbons. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So it's a little bit sweet. Honestly, it's a little bit sweeter than I expected just from first taste. Um, a little, again, the citrus, a little orange maybe, a little honey, a little bit of the oakiness. Yeah. Like bourbon. Tastes like bourbon. Exactly. The finish is a little bit long. Um, I did read one review that said that there was a little bit of bitterness from the oak at the end. I don't really get that. Um, I, I like this. I did also read another review that said they weren't quite sure what all the hubbub was about with this one because it is very scarce and difficult to find. I don't know. I can kind of see that. I think people would really enjoy this and like it. So. Yeah. Well, there you have it. <laughs> that's a that's a great recommendation. All right. Um, so that really about wraps up this episode, you guys. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you joining us for this very special episode with my peanut gallery here. Uh, Michael, thanks again for the Elmer. Appreciate that so much. Um, so until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks, guys. <laughs>